Hey you guys, it's Natasha Weston and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my overall plan of how I'm orchestrating my move from Charleston, South Carolina to Dallas, Texas in the next several months. And I'm also gonna share with you a lot of the tips and things that I'm actually doing to make it happen. So if this is something that you're interested in, then just keep watching this video. So first, before we dive in, I just have to show you guys some love back. The first episode of the Move With Me series did way better than I thought. I honestly was not sure if you guys would even be into this content, but the views are saying that you are, the comments, the DMs, and I'm just so grateful that my experience and my journey is inspiring you guys to take a leap of faith um, and start to explore the idea of moving from one state to another or from one city to another. And the special sauce here is that I have a child. So this brings a slightly different perspective from a lot of the videos um, that are here on YouTube. So. If you have not done so yet, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell and leave a comment below of any questions that you may have so that as we do this Move With Me series, I can can be sure to answer those questions for you. Now, if you have not watched episode one of the Move With Me series, I'm going to leave it either up here, here, or down in the description. Make sure you go over there, check out that video where I am telling you why I decided to move number one and why I chose Dallas as the city of relocation. I want to give you an overview of what my overall plan is on how to actually take this move from an idea, a want, a desire, making the decision, to actually putting things in place so that we can move in the spring of 2021. Well, I want to share with you what I'm personally doing before we actually pick up and physically move to Dallas, Texas in the spring. So I have like probably like seven or eight tips and I do have, y'all know, my handy dandy notebook here. These aren't going to be the typical tips that you're seeing on YouTube, like, you know, the obvious things like save a certain amount of money, um, you know, find a job, things like that. Those are the pretty common tips that I found on YouTube in my research. So I wanted to give y'all a different perspective because those are obvious things that you want to do. And let me also say this, even if you don't have a whole lot of money saved up, I think that the tips that I'm sharing with you is going to help you to save the money or help you to orchestrate strategically so that you give yourself time to plan and that you give yourself time to save money if that's something that you, um, if that's the path that you want to take. These aren't coming in any particular order. I just kind of wrote out my thoughts and things as I have been doing them. And so you can, you know, do what you will with the tip. So the first tip is to visit the city you're moving to, in my opinion, at least two to three times before you physically make the move. So I'm actually flying out to Dallas in two weeks. So there are three things in particular that I am going to be doing once I touch down in Dallas. The first thing is to just obviously fill out the different areas. So just with anywhere, any city that you live in, there are outskirts. So for Dallas in particular, there's Dallas, Dallas and Fort Worth, and then there's the Metroplex. Um, and then their surrounding cities around Dallas are, some of the cities are Arlington, Irving, Plano, um, Richardson. Those are all like little small pockets outside of like main Dallas. I want to actually get there, go to each city, fill out the area, see what kind of people are navigating these particular areas um, and kind of see if the research that I've done on YouTube and on the internet matches what's actually happening there because things can sometimes be totally different when you get to a place. So that's my first plan. The second thing that I'm going to be doing out there is apartment hunting. And one of the tips I'm going to share today is about hiring a realtor or a locator to help you nail down certain things that you're desiring. So I'm going to be doing a lot of apartment touring while I am there. These apartment tours have been set up by my realtor. So that was super helpful as well. I'll dive more into that a little bit um, later on in the video. And another thing that you guys can do is do your job searches out there. Now, my recommendation would be to, depending on how long you're stretching out your planning process, I would wait until closer to your actual move to apply for jobs so that when you go out there, you can interview. And if they call you back the next week, 
you're more prepared to physically pick up and, you know, move to the new city or state. Again, I'm going there to scope out the different areas. I have one particular city in mind that I'm pretty sure we're going to be living in. So obviously I want to spend a couple of days out there, you know, going to different places, um, you know, doing some research, doing some networking. And then again, I want to be doing a lot of apartment tours during the four day trip that I am taking in a couple of weeks. So if I haven't mentioned this yet, I have given myself a six month window. So that's obviously not from the beginning of the first video, but when I actually made the decision and started physically putting things into motion, I said, okay, I'm gonna give myself six months to strategically plan out this move so that one, I'm not abruptly picking up my child and just taking him somewhere else. I wanna give myself time to visit the city a few times. I wanna be able to take him to the city i want to be able to take some of my family to the city where we where we'll be living so i had to give myself at least a six month window however i have seen people do this move in two weeks three weeks two months three months it's really up to your you know uh, your current situation and what your goals are and what you're trying to accomplish for me i felt like six months was plenty of time to plan everything out. so the second tip that i would give again is hiring a realtor or a locator to help you find a place i had no idea that this was even a thing until i started doing my research and a lot of the women that i found here on youtube who were sharing their stories about moving to dallas or any other big city um most of them said to hire a locator a locator is someone who is a licensed realtor in most instances and you pretty much reach out to their agency and say hey i'm relocating to dallas or wherever city you're moving to you let them know you know a rough estimate of when you anticipate moving you let them know um if you know what areas you would be interested in living in you can tell them that or they can make suggestions based off of what you're looking for you tell them you know how many beds how many bathrooms um what amenities you're looking for i particularly emphasize the fact that i had a small child so school district was very important to me i wanted to live in an area that was family oriented had a lot of family at family and kid friendly activities so i don't want to live on the side of town with the college grads and the college students and not even you know older retired people i want to live in a family oriented city so those are all things that i made sure that i told her i also told her that i wanted to live somewhere that had garage space or covered parking because i don't know if you guys know this but it does hail a lot in texas so i don't want um you know to run into that issue i also made a point to let her know i needed a place with washer dryer connections i needed a place with a balcony i needed i needed a lot of things that pertain to making sure that tyler is super comfortable so i made a list before even reaching out to my particular realtor or locator and i said hey this is what i'm looking for this is my budget this is how much i want to spend a month and she literally took that information and came back with a list of places, um, a list of cities in particular that were kid friendly, where a lot of people raised families that had all or some or most of the amenities that I was looking for in a place. And I went through the list and I pretty much like picked out or starred my favorites gave them back to her. She scheduled tours for me for the dates that I'm going to be in town and we'll go from there. So that helped me out tremendously because she lives in Dallas. She knows the city back and forth. She's lived there for a lot of years. So she knows the areas. She knows the best places. That takes a lot of pressure off of me because I'm not physically there. So when I get there, everything is already planned out for me. Now, some tips on saving money while you're making these visits is what I want to go over next because I have found like little, you know, things that have saved me some money. The first thing is when you are going to these cities, I recommend getting a car rental just because if you're going to be doing job searching, apartment hunting or anything like that, you don't want those Lyft or Uber or cab fees to add up. So I reserved a car rental. Most like mainstream car rental places are going to require a deposit 
on top of the amount that it's going to cost you to rent the car per day, not including the fees, the insurances, and all of that good stuff. So one alternative that I've actually used is an app called Turo, where regular people rent their cars. Um, it's more common in bigger cities like Dallas, Atlanta, New York, LA. So I took advantage of using Turo and I was able to rent a car for $24, $25 a day. So one, it cut out, you know, any extra deposits, any extra fees, any, what you see right there is what you pay for. Um, and so for, I think four days I'm paying, you know, under $200. And I think they give you like between six to 800 miles, depending on the person that's renting the car. And so that's plenty for me to, you know, travel around Dallas for four days and do what I need to do. So that's one way that you can save money. Another way that you can pre-plan your trips is to use a website like booking.com where you can reserve your hotel stay and not have to pay until you actually get to the hotel. So if you're scrapped for cash in the beginning, but you need to go ahead and secure a hotel for, for your stays, use booking.com. You have, have to put a credit card on file, but they will not charge it until you get to the hospital and pay. So that's a second, um, I guess, way to kind of like save or plan for a trip to the city you are planning to move to. And then the last tip about saving money as it relates to your rental is if you are doing job searching or apartment hunting or anything like that, plan out the days and the times that you're going to visit these places so that you're not burning gas and running from one side of town to the next multiple times a day. So for example, when I go to Dallas in a few weeks or in a couple of weeks, I have apartment tours in three different pockets of Dallas. So on my first day, I'm going to do all of my apartment tours in Plano. And then in another day, I'm going to do all of my apartment tours in Arlington. And then another day, these are just examples. And then another day, I'm going to do all of my apartment tours or touristy things another day. I'm going to do one area for one day, one for the next, just so that I'm not burning gas. I'm not spending my time sitting in traffic trying to jump from city to city. And it just makes more sense. So those are some things or little tips that I wanted to share with you to make your trip a whole lot more effective. So another tip that I have is to downsize so your overhead is not overwhelming. This goes for before you move and when you move. So when Tyler and I move to Dallas, it's just going to be him and I. I am planning to get a really large one bed, one bath apartment for our first year. The reason, or if I find something with two bedrooms within the same budget, we may, depending on the area, go for that. But my plan is to do a one bed, one bath. It's just me and him. He already sleeps with me a lot right now, unfortunately. So it just works out that I am planning it that way um, for our first year. My goal for the first year is to get settled, to get acquainted, and to be in a comfortable, safe space so that we can both become accustomed to our new life. That extra money that I'll be saving from downsizing, I will put towards the home buying process, which is obviously a part of my bigger plan. Um, so that's just one tip that I wanted to throw out there. You know, don't go to a new city just trying to, you know, live in a penthouse if, if that's too much for you, right? I don't want stress about bills when I get there. And so everything that I'm planning and how I'm planning is strategic so that I can be comfortable, so that Tyler can be comfortable, and so that I can save money towards buying a house within the next two years. That's that. Now, from the flip side of the, of the coin here, before you move, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my hustle has increased tremendously. I have been going really hard in my business. I don't know if I shared that part. So I'm a small business owner and majority of my business is done online, which allows me the flexibility to still work and run my business from any city or state, right? Um, so to get, earn extra money, to you know be able to travel to Dallas a few times before we move, Obviously, I got to make some more money, right? So I have really buckled down with my processing, with my marketing, just making sure that I have consistent income, consistent clients coming in. And this started months and months ago. So all of that is helping to make this move go a lot smoother. Whether you work a nine to five or you have your own business, 
go work some extra hours, you know, stop going out for a while. You know, if you have to resort to not going to the nail salon, getting your wigs sewn in, glued in, whatever your thing is, you're going to have to make some sacrifices, a lot of sacrifices rather, in order to, you know, have a smooth move. That rhyme, a smooth move. So those are just some tips. I know it can be uncomfortable, but if you ask my friends, I've been turning down, you know, dinners, lunches, brunches, nights out. I mean, on top of the fact that it's COVID, but you're going to have to make some sacrifices in different areas so that you can, one, earn more money to move and just set yourself up for a more seamless transition. And then down to my last two tips. The next thing is that you can meet people that live in the city you're moving to before you move to the city. So since I posted that first video, I have met so many people that I was already Facebook friends with, um, people who found the video on YouTube that commented, YouTubers who I've watched their move to Dallas videos. I have met so many people in Dallas since I posted that video that it is absolutely insane. You can meet people again on social media, on YouTube, um, on Facebook, like when I posted about the move, I didn't even know I had so many Facebook friends already in Dallas, which is a plus because they already kind of have an idea of who you are and you vice versa. And so a lot of these people, we've exchanged numbers. We're going to, you know, meet up for brunch when I'm there and they know the city. So it's just really helpful, especially if you don't have any family in the city. Um, it's always really nice to be uh, connected to other individuals like that. I was also watching a YouTube video where they referenced the Meetup app. So when you get to the city, that's something that maybe you can do. Meet people that have um, similar interests. I recommend when you make up your mind to move, go ahead and start meeting people and use social media and platforms like that to do so. And then the last, I, I don't know if this is a tip or more of a suggestion, which should be obvious, is make sure if you are moving with kids or a child, that every move you consider them, literally every move, down to COVID and virtual schooling. Now, I'm praying that by the time we actually make the physical move that COVID is either, you know, slimming down really well or non-existent. But I am also considering what life will be if Tyler has to continue virtual schooling when we actually make the move, right? That will mean if I wanted to get a part-time job, I couldn't because I'm going to have to be home with him virtual schooling, right? Um, so looking at what life would look like from a, a COVID-free existence to a COVID still here existence is very important, especially because of the timing. Another thing is to consider is making sure you do have enough money saved if you can't work. If, if you know, you don't have a business and your child is in grade school and can't stay home by themselves in the daytime, you will have to have some type of plan or cushion money, cushion money to, you know, sit home for, you know, until the summer break when they can go to a camp or daycare. You want to think about all of those things as well. well. There are obviously a lot of other things to consider. Uh, one cool thing that I found in this young lady's YouTube video, which I try to remember the link in the description, she was referencing like this, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's like a pay-as-you-go daycare. So if you do live in a city like Dallas and you don't have any friends or family, you know, that you can trust to watch your child, if you want to go to happy hour or go to an event, it's like a 24-hour daycare or something like that where you can pretty much drop your kid off for five hours, two hours, an hour to go run some errands, take a nap, and you just literally pay as you go. And it's really popular. Um, I can't remember the name of the place. It's like Kids Space or Kids. I don't know. I'll put the information down in the description. So when I do go to Dallas in a couple of weeks, that's also going to be a place or facility that I check out because that's obviously going to be an option. So that's it for today's video. I hope that me sharing my plans or my overall plan and some tips around how I'm planning has helped you. If it has helped you, thumbs up this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and comment down below any further questions that you may have. I think in the next video, you guys, 
I'll be in Dallas. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you turn on the notification bell. Make sure you are connected with me on all social media platforms. All of that information will be down in the description box. And until our next Move With Me video, thank you guys so much for all of the support. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.